Hello and welcome back to Volumes, and in this episode I spoke with Lauren McDonald on veganism, climate justice and activism, and also explored her new uh, project called Food for Thought, it's a really interesting project, uh, obviously you'll hear more about it in the podcast, but yeah, let me know what you think, and thanks for checking it out. I'm Lauren, and I am a full-time climate and animal justice activist from Glasgow. Awesome. Um, so yeah, if we could just take it back to like the very beginning, right? <laughs> okay. As you were saying before we started filming, yeah. how were you introduced to like veganism and, or maybe just okay. like all this life thing <coughs> that you're involved in? Yeah, so it's a pretty long story, but um, right from the beginning as in like when I went vegan was when I was in school, I was in fifth year. Um, one of my friends that I sat next to in English was vegan and I'd never met a vegan before, so... I was always just a bit curious mm. to like what she was eating, what she was doing, like how she was alive, like what <laughs> what, what is alive. a vegan. Um, so I just asked her more questions and over time, like learned more about veganism. And then I one day went onto the Vegan Society website and I was just like, right, okay, I'm going to have to do this. I'm gonna, I know that it's like, I know that it's the right thing to do. So when I had researched into it and I started watching a couple of documentaries and just learning more about it, it seemed like the only reasonable right. option. But a little bit before that, actually, like a year before that even happened, like I was saying earlier, I cut out dairy because I knew that it was really, really bad for acne. Mm. Like putting all these hormones, like cow growth hormones into your body is obviously going to give you spots. But anyway, 17-year-old me thought that was a good idea. So I actually started taking animal products out my diet for selfish reasons and then kind of just figured it out along the way right so you, when you like decided to go full vegan you mm. just like deep dive and went on you cut, you had already cut out dairy though so it was just mm-hmm. meat you had to avoid after that yeah and eggs as well and eggs. it took me like a little while because i think when i first got into veganism the ethical connection wasn't really that strong for right. me like it was um mainly environmental i also understood that it was wrong to eat animals but i'd never been an animal lover i never really cared that much for animals i wasn't really raised that way so the ethical connection for me came maybe a little bit after i'd been following a plant-based diet for a while but now i just like my heart breaks for Mm. all the animals that go through the pain that humans put them through and that's definitely my main driver at the moment so because there was no sort of like ethical connection Mm -hmm. did you worry about like what kind of like makeup you're using or stuff like that mm. because it didn't have you weren't worried about like if it was tested on animals or did you not care about fashion if you're wearing leather and stuff like that oh no i wouldn't wear leather like um i mean it was a very short period of time where the ethical connection wasn't right. that strong i just mean more like um when i started out as a vegan it wasn't like i went vegan overnight because i hadn't had this sort of eureka mm. moment i just was learning more about how it was the right thing to do so right. over the period of about a month or so i realized that the way that I'd been living was so wrong. Right. Are you vegan yourself? No. No, I'm just wondering. That's, that's okay. You might be by the end of the podcast. <laughs> maybe, maybe you could persuade I'll spit me. some facts at you. Yeah, I, I want to hear some facts, definitely. Okay. <laughs> um, But moving on to your campaign, mm-hmm. do you want to talk a bit about uh, Food for Thought? Yeah, so Food for Thought launched on Wednesday just there. This is a campaign that I set up um, to drive the transition to plant-based universities in the uk i believe that universities have such a profound responsibility to care for their students and like for example one in 30 people in the uk are currently studying at university out of the whole population one in 30 are right now at university in the uk so imagine how many meals neither of us are included in that yeah no i'm not (laughs) that's coming later um yeah well actually that is quite relevant because the reason that I want to focus so much on universities is because I dropped out of university because I felt like I couldn't really make enough change there. Uh Um, So yeah, it's really cool to be involved in a project that's trying to create that transition for universities. It has an environmental focus because I believe that when we're trying to create this wider system change, universities obviously have to be a part of that. And Mm -hmm. some universities have even declared a climate emergency, but none of them are addressing the fact that what they have in their menu is the main source of their greenhouse gas emissions and their land use 
and all these sorts of things. It's interesting that you did go to uni, mm-hmm. you dropped out of uni, and now you want to sort the problems that existed in uni when you were there. Exactly. Yeah. Like, it shouldn't even be there. I shouldn't be yeah. having to do this. It's ridiculous. But it's like, it makes sense. It would make no sense if someone was just like, oh, I want mm-hmm. to start fixing unis, but I've never went to uni. Or someone that's in uni, and it's mm-hmm. like, oh, I want to start. But you realise the problem. Yeah, and, it's quite and personal got to rid me, of, I suppose. Yeah. Um, so interesting yeah because of dropping out and like changing my life so much yeah usually we like plug things at the end of the podcast mm. but i really just did it now so lots of people can like check it out because oh, cool. I, I think this is an amazing thing you're doing by the way oh thank you um, so much so yeah how can people help uh so if you want to get involved we got a website up and running and we got all our social medias going if you go to <laughs> foodforthoughtcampaign.org with a four not f o r so um yeah foodforthoughtcampaign.org if you go to the get involved section and then you can find like a map of local universities that are doing this and then a whole document on how you can start up a local campaign and it'll actually be myself and one other guy who will be doing the onboarding so if you want to start a campaign you'll be talking to me Mm -hmm. um yeah all the information's on the website and the instagram is foodforthoughtuni um all the all the stuff's on there it's yeah. really easy to get involved you set up a call with lawrence or myself and yeah so you got website you what and what social medias uh we, we got instagram twitter and facebook right so you got everything got the whole shebang yes. so check it out please ASAP. get involved yeah. we're gonna make every university plant-based and it's gonna be amazing yeah so well, yeah what's the what are like the the uh, fundamental goals mm. to food for thought then just to get as many yeah. universities on board yeah, and also to um, mobilise student groups as well, because I feel like so many university students feel the same that I did, where they feel like they've been sort of like pushed into this lifestyle, they've been pushed into the system, and whilst they might enjoy their course and they might be quite happy with that, they also probably feel as though they're not really living in alignment with their values and being able to express themselves right, in the way yeah. that they want to and being able to mitigate against what's coming for them in the future as much as they want to because they're so busy with studying yeah. so i think it's important to um broaden the demographic and activism and help students get mobilized as well so a large part of food for thought is the fact that um there's going to be there's going to be a national petition and a national team but we really want the drive to come from local yeah. student groups you um, want to keep things as intimate as possible yeah for sure and i want to create good connections with people in, in universities and show them that they can actually do something to help and hopefully people won't feel so hopeless when they see the changes that they can create so is the origin of this idea purely because you were at university and you noticed that mm-hmm. they were kind of being the problem as well yeah totally yeah. um i just think the whole system with universities is really really flawed Mm -hmm. um obviously Mm -hmm. i don't want them to be serving animal products or whatever the heck you want to call them but um yeah i just think it's it's really sad how a lot of students get just pushed into that and they don't get the opportunity to think and reflect and like if they are a vegan and they want to get involved in activism they don't feel like they have the time for it Mm. as well which is a big problem right Um, also in universities nobody seems to know who's in charge of what like with different universities that we've spoken to it's been like the catering operations manager and then it's like but we need to talk to the vice chancellor we need to talk to this person that person mm, the whole system is just a too bit too many cooks yeah <laughs> yeah that's literally yeah, too many cooks <laughs> yeah that's quite interesting uh-huh. as well what's going on there um yeah i know it's mad and um, you think there'd just be one guy there or one girl or one yeah, person and that would be, be like, the same the across universities but i feel like it's such newfound territory like nobody's really done something like this before at universities mm. so i think there's definitely a gap yeah. for it yeah it's I'm definitely sure. the first thing i've ever heard of anything like this mm. and it's an interesting and very progressive idea i'm glad you think so yeah we've actually already had some um some progress like the university of the west of scotland which mm-hmm. eve you've spoken to eve before mm-hmm. check out eve's podcast yeah, if you haven't already it's a goodie uh, it is very good <laughs> um yeah so she's going to be working on the campaign with me and we've already started up our campaign at the university of the west of scotland and they've introduced a plant-based option on their menu every day across all three campuses which is sick and you were single-handedly behind that you and eve were well yeah not single single-handedly because eve is there um yeah dual handedly (laughs) yeah shout out to eve but we have a small national team at the moment that's made up of myself eve who's doing the graphic design and the campaign at uws we've got um someone working on the website we've got 
people doing like right. reaching out for endorsements so a lot um, of creative minds behind it as well yeah it's really nice to have a team working mm-hmm. together on it and like to and see the idea manifest it must feel good to know that you've actually made an impact already and you can there's something tangible there you can see that you've done something yeah for sure i mean it's really difficult like what what i do but seeing the changes makes it so worth yeah. it for sure yeah you must be i mean i can't put words in your mouth but you must be proud of like seeing that like yeah. there's difference between having an idea and then that idea becoming a reality it's you true have a reality. yeah i sometimes struggle to like recognize how much has actually been done or how much progress mm-hmm. i'm having or that my the groups that i'm involved with are having i can sometimes get a little bit of like imposter syndrome where i just think that i'm like just doing things and nothing right. and i don't really know when i'm making that big an impact so for someone else to tell me that i'm making an impact is nice it's difficult to recognize that sometimes right. because of how severe everything is it's difficult to focus on the good things because there's so much negative that's really interesting you say that because i feel like i've never thought about it le- like that because mm-hmm. i always think as soon as you do anything out of the norm you know you're doing out of the norm you become more self-aware mm-hmm. it's only yeah. when you're in the norm do you have what this like you do something consistently and you're in a routine but then maybe like it's hard to think that you you may be in a routine now even yeah. though it's like something out of the social norm you could still get in a routine you could start stop noticing like the impact you're making because mm-hmm. you're just doing 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 That's and not true. realizing or or putting things yeah, in perspective it's such a different it's a different way of life that people like normal people yeah kind of <laughs> Ew, <girl>. think, <laughs> think what i'm doing is like absolutely mental um or yeah people will message me and be like oh what you're doing is amazing and i'm like it's really not like this is a massive problem mm. i am i'm like a socially acceptable looking white female <laughs> living in the western world who's just like posting stuff on social media to try mm. and get people to think about things like that's really all that i'm doing so i'm such a tiny tiny little part of the solution um that i feel like i get too much credit which may be the case but how do you do it better mm, um how do you make more impact <clears throat> Well, I think we won't really solve any of these big problems until we actually take accountability for our own actions like that. Like, um, recognising the fact that I am privileged and despite being upset about the planet and all the animals dying and all of that, like, at least I'm not one of the animals in that situation. At least I'm not someone starving because 80% of the grain in Ethiopia gets sent straight to the West to be fed to cows so Mm. that it can go into burgers like my life could be so much worse so i think if people actually start looking to each other and think like we're so lucky we have each other we have friendships we have so much love in our lives then we can actually create a nice change together and create these good communities but we (laughs) can't create good communities until we all like hold hands basically but at the same time we're stuck in this sort of like Mm -hmm. modern era though aren't we so scary i think like it's almost like there's like there's doing bad and it's ignoring it and yeah. not and not being self-aware and just being stuck in the routine mm-hmm. and then there's where you are which is doing good right and it's like but you're still stuck in like this modern era and then there's like this middle weird ground where it's like you could do neither mm-hmm. and you could just like go and join like a commune and not have your phone but what you're doing in that situation even though you're making no impact on the planet you're not making an, a positive impact either mm-hmm. you're not using a voice and I feel it's like maybe using a voice, you have to do that now. You you can't just exist now. You have to use your voice. You have to be part of something. It really does feel that way. Cause it, it's interesting you say that, actually. I've been thinking about this a lot recently where I've realised that a lot of the time I work too hard and I burn myself out and mm. um, I'll need to take... Well, the best way to put it is I'll like keep working and working and working and think, like right, I need to post this, I need to do this, I need to like have all these meetings every day, like bang, bang, bang. And then I'll just reach a point where I'll be like, well, I can't do it anymore. Mm. And then I, like in December, just there, I did this. And I got physically ill because of working myself too hard yeah. and feeling guilty that I wasn't doing enough and trying to push all this stuff out for people to look at. And then I took some time to just chill and I felt so much better. And since then, I've tried to balance my life a little bit better and think, like, I need to have this regenerative time and I I need to make an impact as well. So you can't be in the middle and you can't do nothing. Or you shouldn't anyway, you can. But as much as I might want to just do nothing sometimes, it's more about finding a balance. and How do you find that balance, though? Like, how do you find that balance of, of like, putting yourself out there and and speaking your truth? Mm -hmm. But 
uh, like not being so. <laughs> I love like, that term. Like, speak your truth. <laughs> speak your truth. <laughs> but not being so like bogged down by like people's negativity or like your mental health being absolutely destroyed by putting yourself out online. Yeah, I mean, I'm probably not the best person to ask because like I I don't have perfect mental health and I don't have a perfect balance. Maybe that's why you're the perfect person to ask because for people <laughs> that are experiencing the same thing, yeah, they want to hear your voice. Yeah, that's yeah, that's very true. Um. I don't know. It's it's difficult to give other people advice on like how to run Life. their lives. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you just do become very desensitized to people giving you harassment on social media and being nasty to you when you do what I do. Because people people just are like that, and yeah. I think it's really important to think about what you actually want for yourself and what you want to see happen in your life and actually make that happen rather than thinking like oh what's this person gonna think what's that person gonna think like I actually had a conversation with one of my friends recently because people ask me this all the time like people seem to think that I have my stuff all together but I really don't but I think as long as you realize like if you are making decisions based on what other people think of you or what other people are going to comment on you you're not even on your own path you're not mm. you're not doing anything to help yourself you're on someone else's path because yeah. yeah if they're if they're trying to bully you into doing something then they're steering you off the course that you yeah. want to be on sounds very philosophical but i think we need mm-hmm. to think about what we want more rather than what other people want us to do and social media is just so bad for that yeah you need to be more of a creator than a consumer exactly yeah. Yeah, people just don't take the time to think that they can actually create what they want to from mm-hmm. their lives. And people just kind of go with the flow and don't take as many opportunities as they should, unfortunately. Yeah. And I guess a lot of people, maybe I was going to say a lot of people just don't care to do anything. But is it that they don't care or they don't realise or are they just stuck in a routine or what is it? You know I don't know. I, mean? I, I think that there's a real disillusionment in in people today and young people especially like i i don't believe that people living in this little social media bubble or like just living the way that they're told to are genuinely happy i think that there's a lot of depression and a lot of sadness in the way that we live right now and mm-hmm. i think people are so scared to confront that but re- like reaching out of that little box and actually trying to look around and see what you want rather than what this kind of dystopian futuristic society is giving yeah. you because it's not the only option like yeah things can be a bit horrible sometimes with the way that we have to rely on social media and compare ourselves to pe- other people all the time whilst knowing that the planet is going to collapse upon mm. us and we probably don't have the best future and there's plastic everywhere and everything's just chaotic but you have yourself and you have your own thoughts and even though society can be a bit bad you need to find <laughs> love really yourself we're, we're just too comfortable at this mm-hmm. point everything's just too comfortable and we don't want to like be self-aware about how comfortable it is because the more yeah. self-aware we are the more we realize oh actually this isn't very good oh, exactly this is quite bad oh. <laughs> I, I honestly really do get it when people don't want to yeah. open up their eyes in that way because you just can't shut them afterwards yeah. like every day i'm just realizing more things about how yeah. horrible society is but at the same time i feel so grateful that i can actually yeah. experience such an authentic version of the world rather than Absolutely. being clouded by like money and mm-hmm. possessions and stuff yeah. these nonsensical things these <coughs> nonsensical doings mm-hmm. nothing nothing really makes much sense you just realize you're doing things because yeah. <laughs> everyone else is kind of just doing it so you just do it you don't realize why you're doing yeah, it. yeah it's like what you were saying before we were recording as well like nothing makes sense <laughs> nothing nothing makes sense <laughs> yeah you, I can't so even true. like word that in a way that makes sense because nothing makes sense. I totally get what you mean. Like, just yeah, like all yeah, this like, technology. Yeah. Like, how I don't have a clue how this works. Like, I, <laughs> people are going to listen to this. <laughs> right? How does that make sense? How are they listening to this? Yeah, exactly. That's freaking me out. Like, someone, yeah. someone in like a few weeks or whatever is going to be watching this on YouTube. And but right now we're sitting here, but yeah. then in a few weeks that's going to happen. And yeah our voices <laughs> like we're creating noises using our voice we're just making noises we're just squawking into a mic <laughs> i feel like we're just talking people... absolute nonsense now <laughs> yeah let's get back on track um, but yeah had, enjoy uh... the podcast in the future <laughs> oh. <laughs> freaking out. i'm gonna take a nose lead um i had this thought the other day and it's like how we sort of have 
like everything sort of break mm-hmm. broken down we have the what am i saying <laughs> <laughs> or we understand human behavior through like nature and nurture and okay. it seems like all oh, quite strict like that's a that is a formula used mm. for all like everything now it's like nature and nurture what did they go through what happened how what were their parents like oh that's all that like what their chemical balance like right all that makes sense i'm not saying that doesn't make sense it makes somewhat sense like i get how uh, things can shape you mm-hmm. but i think there's like another part to that that's like underappreciated and it's like what do you want to do because i know that i'm naturally a lazy person my parents weren't lazy people so i suppose uh through like their nature i'm not lazy but through nurture i'm lazy because they never made me do anything i was just spoiled all the time so i'm just a lazy person i think mm-hmm. those two parts have led to me being a lazy person but not like uh, there's like this other one that exists and it's like i don't even know what you'd call it like your character or whatever and that's telling me don't be lazy L- lazy is not cool get your comfort yeah, like zone your like go run breathe in that cold air go look at the stars at night go do things yeah you're conscious that's exactly it you just you're conscious like as something just completely cosmic there's no mm-hmm. reason for why it's telling you to do things but you should always listen to it we yeah, always listen just to listen to like oh, let's sit on the couch and watch tv no don't listen that's to that's the that easy one. thing to do yeah, yeah exactly like you one. can live your whole life doing stuff yeah. like that but y- yeah you're totally on point there there's never been a great person who has sat <clears throat> and watched tv mm. no, not one everyone's always listened to their conscious and they went 100 miles an hour and they went and lived life and they've lived out their comfort zone and i like that that's what you're doing because it seems like that's what you're doing thanks yeah i mean i'm trying my best i wouldn't say that i got it perfect yet i mean i'm only like i'm only that's 19, fine no if you get it perfect I'm trying that's, my best. that's rubbish don't get yeah. it perfect you're doing something you know what i mean you're not just sitting watching tv and maybe you mm. do sit and watch tv and i'm not criticizing people really. that sit and watch tv <laughs> but you're doing something you you're being part of something and that's amazing yeah I, I think that's why a lot of people do like reach out to me in that sense and mm. say like oh what you're doing is amazing is because just because i'm doing something yeah like i get that all the time especially when i'm out and i'm with people that i haven't seen in a while i have to go through the same conversation of like oh you're doing amazing i can't believe you're actually doing something mm-hmm. like i wish i was doing something and you just really sort of feed into people's um mentalities where mm-hmm. you realize like other people just don't do. tend to yeah. do things without I, I don't know it sounds harsh but i just wish that more people actually like followed what they want to do wanted yeah. to do or if they don't know what they want to do think about it. it like make yeah. literally like make a list like what makes me happy what makes me feel fulfilled or what makes me feel horrible if you haven't found anything yeah 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 um i don't know i've not got it perfect and i guess i'm lucky that in the sense that i have a cause that i care about mm. um yeah that's good that you found your thing early mm. on i feel because you can like invest a lot of time into it it's true and, and uh i really don't know hone in it is it's still quite difficult for me to think of it as like a thing because for me i just want to like i want to end animal suffering and i want to mitigate the worst effects of climate breakdown Mm. like that's just what that's just what i want to do but it doesn't really reflect on me i just think like these things need to end and more people should care about them i don't think that my um like my efforts should really matter that much because i'm not i'm not the center of what we should be talking about like we should be talking about animal suffering we should be talking about the climate like people focus too much on what the individual is doing i think at the same time mm. yeah so it's yeah. been that blend of like and the now and the bigger picture mm-hmm. yeah totally yeah i want to focus more on like the bigger picture i feel like at this point it's really important for us to let our egos go as activists and think like we will we'll, we will get recognition for what we do and people will be like oh i wish i, I had less laziness in me so i could do Mm. something like that but we need to increase the animal centrism and increase talking about how much we actually care about the climate rather than like how well we're doing yeah yeah that's really interesting my opinion as well Hmm. Hmm. yeah which is um why um you were talking about this project earth 2020 the other one Yeah, yeah yeah um so one of my friends has set up this project called earth 2020 to try and increase the collaboration and the effectiveness and the an- animal centrism of the animal rights movement um it's all about like leaving your egos behind in 2019 <laughs> and um going forward and trying to actually make a difference because i feel like the animal justice movement could make so much progress if people just left their egos behind mm. and 
actually try to collaborate and work together so what they're going to be doing if you're in if anyone's interested is they're going to be um facilitating conferences with all the different animal rights organizations like save movement meet the victims etc like direct action everywhere all these different groups are going to be coming together for regular conferences where we're going to try and establish key values that all these organizations have and things that we can actually work on together right and then there's also going to be action weeks every month um that's going to have collaborations from different organizations working on an action together each day to try and really push the pressure onto the government and onto all these organizations Mm. that are exploiting animals and actually make a difference rather than worrying about ourselves and like oh i'm so damaged like i have to deal with the non-vegan world like we just gotta keep going yeah uh how do people get involved in that um the information is all on my instagram i think i feel like the easiest thing yeah. if anyone's watching this is just to go to my instagram yep. page because all like all my activism stuff's on there it's i mean you can link it probably but yeah, it's yeah, yeah. um lauren dot mcdonald with mac like the earth i can't remember what the earth 2020 um account username is but it's definitely on yeah. my instagram somewhere I'll you can find it, it on there everyone yeah. can get it yeah you can yeah. you can find the earth 2020 yeah. thing as well um and do you think uh, like targeting the government and, and politicians mm. is, do you think that's the best way going about this and putting in sort of like a, a institutional change mm-hmm. yeah i really really i'm a big advocate for system change i think that in an ideal world you'd be able to change every individual and everyone would like i said just start loving each other and like mm. focusing on and um, bettering themselves and like blah 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 but that's not gonna happen dopamine bombs into the yeah um, literally like that's yeah. that's never gonna happen so um Could i think <laughs> Could can we do this <laughs> um i think if we try and get um, mass mobilization in society at least to a point where we can put real pressure on organizations and on governments then we're going to create such a bigger change mm. like I was saying one in 30 people in the UK are st- currently studying at university. All we need to get universities to be plant-based and to make such a massive difference there is to mobilise students across the con- country in small groups, but at each university. So that's only a very, very small number of people working on something, but they can create such a big change if they put, put like a top-down focus. Like we want to attack the person with the mo- not attack non-violent no we want to we want to persuade we want to we want to persuade the people at the top that mm. have the most power that exploit everyone because mm. at the end of the day who like question the authority who's who's to say that these people should make these massive decisions on yeah. how our life is going to pan out it's so unfair yeah. yeah i mean we could get on a tangent about that and a <laughs> non-stop but it's, it's absolutely ludicrous that a few people have so much control um, mm-hmm. And even like above the government, like there's billionaires that could just change the world in an instant. Yeah. Uh, what is one person going to do with a billion pounds? It's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. I think about that a lot. Yeah. No one needs a billion. No one needs even close to a billion. You need so little money. Like all I spend money on nowadays is food and rent mm. and maybe like subway pass. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> as in like for the underground yeah i know what you meant yeah <laughs> a subway pass for going to subway <laughs> that foot long <laughs> um, that changes your life no nah, recently i've really tried to think about what i actually need and how much money i really need to spend and it's yeah. not anywhere near the amount that people yeah. spend um but yeah anyway what what on earth is someone doing with a billion pounds i yeah. could i could not spend a billion yeah. pounds I mean, I could probably spend a billion pounds. Spend it on saving the planet. Yeah, I think that's what I would spend a billion pounds on. Oh yeah, on. totally. Yeah. I mean, if I'd, if anyone wants to give me a billion pounds to put it towards environmental and animal charities, then please do. <laughs> um, I was reading about how uh, Donald Trump just like got a pass for like an extra one hundred and twenty-seven billion uh, towards like the, their the U.S. military, and uh, someone points out that if you only took something like seventeen billion of that you could uh, like completely eradicate homelessness globally for every year like and that that's like what what yeah <laughs> and they're investing that into a military of one country one country could just take like i don't know i'm not good at the maths but like what's that like less than 20 percent. i don't know i'm a drop I, <laughs> I don't know then and just like completely solve everywhere else mm what's going on what yeah I, I mean we can talk about the us as much as we want to but unfortunately the uk is going down the yeah, same yeah. 
I didn't know the dark facts of the UK route. though, so it's, it yeah. wasn't as applicable. But yeah, you're totally right. Yeah. Honestly, I've not been engaging in the news that much recently. No. Um. Yeah, because I just everything's just too much, you know. Yeah. Um, and I think the the media is such a big problem nowadays as well that you need to be really cautious of mm. how you consume not just like what you buy but what you actually let into your consciousness mm-hmm. like yeah these media outlets manipulate us so much yeah, yeah I, I couldn't agree more yeah mm-hmm. that's it their total agenda is just to keep us on their platform for as long as possible so they will mm-hmm. tell us the most outrageous most uh, controversial things to keep us clicking and keep us interested because no one really likes nice things we mm. all like nice things, but we're not going to read an article about nice things. Yeah, but we crave that sort of drama. Yeah, we want something that's bad. We want to mm. we want to hear something that's controversial. We want to see an argument or, or, or like a controversial tweet. That's what like gets people going. And that's what keeps us on those platforms. And that's what keeps them making money. So they'll mm-hmm. just talk lies and, and slander to keep us mm-hmm. interested. Yeah, I was actually, I was watching the news recently w- with a friend and we were honestly just sitting there laughing because the way that they they say yeah. the news it's like it's, it's, super dramatic and yeah, <laughs> everything is a crazy so story yeah, yeah. L- literally like they're they're just supposed to be presenting us with yeah. facts and information but it becomes like a whole theatrical yeah. performance yeah uh, yeah it doesn't make any <laughs> sense it really doesn't um and it's it's just strange because the news you could watch the news for hours mm-hmm. and all you'll see is what's bad and what's going wrong you'll not hear like oh this is a great thing that happened in this mm-hmm. place or here's like so and if it is it's something like oh here's a dog that was on a skateboard <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. like something so thank, pointless thank you thanks. <laughs> thanks for this knowledge have you ever this is, seems like a weird tangent but bear with me here have you ever seen rick and morty no no right okay well if anyone has ever seen rick and morty there's this scene in it where um rick and morty the two lead char- characters are watching intergalactic television and okay. they, they get to switch through like every television um channel that is happening in the whole universe and okay. it just it just comes up with the wackiest wackiest stuff ever um and it, it sounds kind of improvised and like it doesn't make any sense and when we were watching the, when i was watching the news with my friend i was thinking like this feels like in rick and morty when nothing makes sense and it's news from another dimension because like what we were being presented uh, with is just so ludicrous and it just doesn't make any sense yeah. and i just can't believe any of it is real that's funny it just feels like you're kind of like w- looking in on like some sort of other world that doesn't actually exist but like this is actually happening yeah it's- they're literally poking fun at reality mm-hmm. that's weird yeah oh. literally makes you shiver doesn't it because mm-hmm. you think oh this is so funny this me- this is meaningless garbage that i'm watching and you think about it and you're like Oh, yeah but like there's oh actually no, someone's us. just been shot <laughs> yeah that, that's what's going on here yeah oh. like in real life yeah uh, i went to texas and uh i remember like every morning the only things that'd be on the tv are like here's the kids that are, are still kidnapped uh and missing uh here's the local shooters that are out of prison uh here's the rapists that are in your area and that was it like that's all you mm-hmm. got in the morning and it was so strange and like you'd get the occasional like oh here's a guy on the loose uh if you see the guy looks like this he's just killed and raped like six women you're like and you're like thanks like, like this is America. having your morning tea yeah i mean i know you're saying like <clears throat> Britain is close behind it's mm-hmm. not that great but w- like across the board we're pretty safe like mm-hmm. we're pretty safe and comfortable if anything we're maybe like too safe we're, well we are too safe we're too comfortable we're too in a routine yeah, we're just kind of clogged the UK machine just at this point don't realize like what's going on in the world like i feel like the human brain just doesn't have this potential to catastrophize like we're sitting here having this conversation and we're fine but like a billion animals have just been killed in australia mm-hmm. by bushfires yeah. and there was actually an article in the news a couple of days ago that the smoke is going to go all the way around the globe and come back to australia so like we might actually have smoke in our air soon and we're just sitting here like just having a little chat yeah um yeah it's crazy the amount of negative information that we're fed every day we've actually lost our ability to understand how bad things are yeah if you went back i feel like a couple hundred years ago or maybe not even as long as that Mm -hmm. people would react to that people would would be devastated Mm -hmm. and we only sort of pretend to be devastated it's like we're all like sociopathic we're like oh that's so sad i'll tweet about it but you don't it doesn't mean anything to you don't we don't really Mm -hmm. care it's we've really lost that connection to to feel that this is all real 
and gaining that sort of connection back through activism mm. and through actually like really starting to care about th- things more it means that I have to have this sort of space to grieve as well because I feel like mm. I actually am feeling the burden of the fires in Australia and like yeah all these other horrible things that are going on in the world what actually started this this sort of stage of like eco anxiety for me was uh, when I saw that the Amazon in Brazil was like completely engulfed in flames mm. um over summer and that was the first time that I'd actually sat and thought about the fact that that was actually happening mm. right now mm. and no one cared and no one was doing anything about it and for example 91 percent of Amazon rainforest destruction comes from animal agriculture yeah it was and I just tra- yeah, yeah and I was trying so hard to like educate people and trying to take the burden the, of the world on my shoulders that when you step back and you realize all this stuff is still happening it's so depressing but now with the fires in Australia even I can't catastrophize it I can't think of the fact that a billion animals have actually died in these fires mm. and that Australia is probably just going to be completely singed mm. soon yeah yeah it's hard to put these things mm-hmm. into perspective especially when you like look outdoors and you don't just see it it's not immediate mm-hmm. you see it through a screen or you see it on like ink on a paper like that doesn't mean as much to us and and I, I don't know it, it's kind of like um like i always knew that uh the apartheid south african apartheid like that was a thing like that existed and that was atrocious but it was only the other day when i spoke to someone who was from south africa and mm-hmm. they, they grew up in it did i really realize oh this this is real yeah like, she was real. a child during this uh-huh. like, she knew people who who were hurt and imprisoned and and that and like i feel like maybe human stories just people telling stories that's when exactly. you realize when it becomes real you either see it or you you hear it from the source but everything else is just sort of like so detached it doesn't mean as much like the people talking on the news mm-hmm. what do they know they're just reading off like they, they've never experienced and they it. don't they don't take the time to care about it either no. they literally just read it off the screen and then it. they go and then go in the next day and then they read and, yeah. the next horrible thing off the screen yeah they must be so detached to information. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but anyway, <laughs> in a happier note, uh, what's going on in your life? What's the future plans? What's going on? Future plans? I'm not really sure. My intentions for this year are just to really drive this campaign and to try and see a transition to plant-based universities. Mm-hmm. I know it sounds unrealistic, but I really, really want to see that happen. Do you think and it is unrealistic? I think other people would think it's unrealistic, but as a goal that I'm setting for myself and that I know other people will set for themselves when mm. they get involved in the campaign. Um, I don't you, think it's unrealistic. Yeah. I, I think, yeah, I think I can do it. But um, apart from that, I'm going to try and take some time off and maybe like go traveling, do some slow traveling mm. for a while. Slow traveling? Yeah, I'm flight free. Oh, yeah, yeah flight free, slow traveling. Mm-hmm, so like what's slow traveling? Trains. trains, buses, yeah. walking, bikes. Yeah, walking. A car, mm. a hike. Is that too risky? Mm. No one wants to hitchhike anymore. Nah, See, not not day, as a right. not as a woman. Mm. I just wouldn't feel safe enough. Um, mm. Yeah, but more interestingly, the campaign. I'm really, really wanting to see at least a few universities go plant based yeah. soon. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the whole flight free thing. That's the, after um, cutting out animal products. The next biggest thing you can do to reduce your environmental impact is to stop flying and then stop buying clothes for example mm. and stop buying new things yeah. so those are three things that i'm really trying to use to um make my life more where i want it to be this year as yeah. well like get rid of all my material belongings as much as i can and go and see things but n- don't take an airplane yeah um yeah and keep going with the animal and environmental activism that's my plans i never like like poking holes in things when i don't mm. have a uh like fixes for them you know what i mean like i, I don't like point out like not flaws or, or but uh when i don't have like the uh, like a solution for them but i feel like like fast fashion first of all that's a problem like oh that's a problem uh, even people that buy fast fashion know that that's a problem mm-hmm. um and yeah it's another addiction that we have as well in the same yeah. way as technology we are, we're addicted to this um transitory pleasure that we get from <laughs> buying something or looking on a phone screen and mm. 
yeah i'm really trying to remove those like artificial pleasures from my life that's mm. what i want to do in 2020 is. artificial pleasures yeah. that's such a good way of putting it yeah yeah it's because when, when you think about it. the way that your life is organized and how many things in your life are Orange, artificial many, pleasures yeah. like the clothes that you have definitely coffee is a stimulant mm. alcohol which you drink on the weekends mm. um or whatever um or the weekdays you don't yeah, know how people you don't live. know um and like eating um animal flesh and secretions because it tastes good like mm. all of these things that we do that don't make us happy they make us feel disillusioned and they make mm. us feel unfulfilled and depressed i'm trying to remove those things from my life so like i recently quit drinking and buying new clothes mm. and flying and all these things apart from being vegan are really um, important too the the it's not the problem i have but it's just a, a sort of like maybe it is a sort of problem but with kind of flying you don't have a convenient and and uh even a alternative that's as genuinely useful you can't really get to australia mm-hmm. not flying and if you do how long is that going to take you you know what i mean yeah um so how much of all the so like you want to travel so clearly mm-hmm. traveling is an important part i love traveling as well but then when do we draw the line of like i want to travel but now i I can't travel there because that is not possible um i think we really need to recognize our privilege and even being able to consider going on an airplane yeah because that's something that such a small minority of the world can actually do and afford Um, i I don't know the figure but it's is i think it's even lower than that i think it's lower than at most like a few percent of the population um have ever flown in their life wow um yeah so i think we need to recognize like is it something that i actually need to do or do i just want to do it because like i'm bored and i want to go away Hmm. and if that's the reason then is that actually a good enough reason to have such a massive impact on the environment right but for some people they can't avoid it like they're they're stuck in the system and the lifestyle that they live means that they need to fly so if you have to fly for work like that's not really your fault because you need you need a job you need to be able to live that's that's what you do but if it's for like just for, yeah just for a holiday so then you, why wouldn't you just right. take the train uh, obviously not not going to take the train to australia but like <laughs> why would you need to go to australia in the first place do you need to go there or do you just want to f- right for yeah so I don't you'd know. cut out that that's kind of like one more question is would you cut out like the experiences of going to like certain places um because of that Mm -hmm. yeah i would i think that there's there's so much to see i suppose yeah there's so much to see in your doorstep you're totally yeah like you can get a a train to you can get from here in glasgow to paris for 50 pounds as i last checked um guess where i'm going tomorrow (laughs) (laughs) let's do it um yeah you can get around so cheap on so cheaply on trains and buses that Mm there's not really much of a justification to fly to europe and mm. i think we need to um, appreciate the the journey more as well it sounds yeah. really philosophical again but like at in in a literal sense like enjoy the journey look out the window yeah. don't you don't need to be like stuck thousands of kilometers in the air like oh mm. that's scary like you can actually just um enjoy traveling and yeah. the actual traveling part of traveling and see the country yeah. whilst you're I, I totally the agree there yeah me me and Lucy and my friend Andrew mm-hmm. we went to London and um, we took the bus to London it took oh us like God. 10 10 hours I think it was around mm-hmm. 10 hours but I thought, it, I thought I was like this is the most fun experience I've ever yeah. had like people were shouting on the bus there was an <laughs> argument with the driver I was like this is great fun you would never get this <laughs> on a plane like you you wouldn't get this anywhere else you wouldn't get mm-hmm. this on a taxi you wouldn't get this on a train probably on a bus like it was so fun um but I, I did have fun like I, I got to sit read a book and like mm-hmm. look at the window saw place I've never seen before and yeah. I did find it enjoyable you know what I mean yeah I think we need to um, enjoy those sort of um, moments where we're not really doing anything yeah and like we see those we as so going burdenous so quickly. like yeah the journey is always the burden or it's just it's the destination that counts no like it really is the journey that's the fun bit exactly the destination is just like mm-hmm. the highlights but the journey is good the journey is good yeah i recently actually took the night bus t- to and from london 
Um, I went on the first, came back like a week later or whatever, but that was my first time on a night bus. And that was such a crazy experience yeah. for me as well. Cause I'm like, yes, I'm actually doing this like proper yeah. environmental lifestyle. Um, How was the night bus though? That sounds a bit, a bit scary. Creepy, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> could have been better, could have been worse. I was safe and no one said anything to me and I made it to London and back. You survived. Yes, I did. Well done. That's, <laughs> this podcast we were rubbish right now. If you didn't survive, you'd be talking <laughs> to myself. Um, yeah. Uh, you went to the uh, protests in London. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you think protests like that make a difference? That is a very interesting question. Because um, if you're referring to the London October Rebellion, yeah. yeah. So I was there with Animal Rebellion for the first week mm-hmm. and it was it was insane like the amount of people who just wanted to give a personal sacrifice to this cause and to show the government how much we actually care um like i can't remember the figures but thousands thousands of people thousands, got arrested yeah. willingly yeah for the environment or mm-hmm. for animals but then what people remember from these two weeks of protests and anyone who is involved in activism is gonna like cringe at me saying this but it, the only thing that people remember from these two weeks is these two guys that jumped on top of the tube oh um, yeah that's You're all right, anyone yeah. remembers yeah so i think we need to change our tactics and think like unfortunately that did not work because the media put such a spin on it yeah um like just two guys out of thousands who made a mistake and they did something that was not in line with the way that um, these organisations function. To correct me if I'm wrong, mm. didn't they ask beforehand if this was a good idea and everyone was kind of like, no, don't do that. That's a bad idea. Um, like, everyone was kind of like, guys, just don't do this. Yeah, well, I mean, I couldn't give you first-hand knowledge because I'm, like, I've heard that too, but I also got yeah. it from the internet, so I don't I don't really well, know. It yeah, wasn't like, I, no one actually told me that that was right. the case, but from what I understand, yeah, everyone thought that was a, a horrible idea, which yeah. it was. Yeah. Um, and then it just messed up the personal sacrifice and the sense of community yeah. and progress that we achieved during those two weeks. Because for us living through that and um, experiencing it, it was so different to what it was portrayed as in the media. And it felt, I felt so much hope when I was there and mm. um, I felt like I was doing something good. And then you come back and everyone's like, oh, it didn't work because of these two guys that jump on top of the tube. Mm. Yeah. Mm. that's interesting that like you could put so much effort into it and, and it could just be one tiny little flaw that they could pick up on mm. and it just brings there's always going to be down. flaws though i still think that it was effective and that it got people together and it's shut yeah. down london yeah. and it sh- like <laughs> it's pretty rock and roll. all these arrests are still being processed like th- there's no way that the government can handle us continuing mm. to do this um but personally that experience really affected me like i came back um, on the first Sunday I was there for the first whole week and then my plan was to go back to uni on the Monday so I came back on the Sunday night went to one class on the Monday morning and then dropped out wow <laughs> and if, like I'd imagine a lot of people had the had the same effect on them mm-hmm. so yeah it probably had maybe like a a small ripple where a lot of people just uh, opened their eyes in mm-hmm. a new way yeah it really yeah. did that's interesting Um, but yeah do you got, got any more thing, what am I saying? You got mm. anything you want to say? Anything you want to close off with? Anything? Um, yeah, I mean, I'd like to close off by just saying that if you are not following a plant-based diet, you should. Um, because it's the best thing for your health. If you don't believe me, check out nutritionfacts.org. Um, Dr. Gregor will sort you out with some facts. Um, it's the best thing for the environment, if you don't believe me watch Cowspiracy um, or I don't know like look at the news because people are starting to actually Mm -hmm. realise that and it's the best thing for the animals and I don't need to explain that we do not need to be taking the lives of innocent sentient beings to eat them it's completely ridiculous and you will survive without it and you can give up cheese you can do it please give up cheese yeah cheese is a weird one cheese is so weird it's coagulated 
bovine growth serum. I was uh, having a conversation <laughs> with you the other day and coagulated was the word I couldn't remember. And I was, I was well, there you go. Something. You can have that one on me. Um, thank you for coagulating. <laughs> but uh, I read the reason for why cheese is so hard to give up. And it basically, it's because it has like the same sort of like dopamine effects as like tons of drugs. Mm-hmm. Like... Um, it's like i mean I'm, pro- I'm i'm not a doctor right i don't know if you know this. i'm not a doctor but the way it was kind of like described is that when people take like their first hit of heroin mm-hmm. it's like the most like euphoric moment of their lives so every time after that they can never replicate it and that's like, why people become addicted and the same sensation it's happens the same with, with cheese, cheese. you like, like you're, chasing highs with yeah. cheese so your body the amount of like uh, serotonin your body releases when you when you try cheese mm. It can never be matched for some reason your That's body just like it has like a an instant um what's the word like it uh, uh, gets used to it instantly so you can uh replicate the amount of serotonin produced by eating cheese that's regardless horrible. of quantity so that's why people find it really hard to give up cheese it's much more like psychological and to do with like mm-hmm. your chemical balance rather than just like oh i love the taste of cheese but nevertheless yeah, it just seems like there's something deeper to it like people are like well, don't take away my cheese being, there might be. yeah <laughs> but, don't take away my cheese. <laughs> but we should not be yeah. um, consuming the fluids of another animal no other animal no other mammal or n- probably no other animal on the planet actually does that like takes mm. the takes the milk of another species i mean i feel like there's so probably some crazy. animals that nah, nah. Uh, i think we're the only ones that do that is, do you know yeah. like if a wolf killed like an uh, like a deer wait do you yeah do you produce milk you don't think the the wolf would drink the milk? I don't think so. No? You think it would leave the milk? <laughs> it, w- it wouldn't directly go for the milk, but it would probably have the milk as well. Something that we need to consider, though, is that wolves are yeah, natural they, they, yeah. predators. Yeah. They actually kill and eat animals mm. on the spot. We pay other people yeah. to do a job for us that we would not be willing to do. Yeah. And slaughterhouse uh, workers have like the highest rates of PTSD, um, domestic sexual violence, um, anxiety. D- domestic sexual violence? Yeah. Oh, like, as in they're the uh, yeah, cause? Like the, or uh-huh. they're the recipient? Like cause. Really? Because when you're exposed to so much violence Damn. on a daily basis, like they have to kill animals yeah. for money. So that that messes you up in the head. I suppose I, I thought maybe... Uh, That's how unnatural it is. Yeah. It's actually causing people to... Act erratically yeah, outside that to environment. To be so violent. That's good not to finish mm. on. <laughs> yeah, so if you, if you couldn't kill the animal yourself mm. and you ask someone else to do it for you and you pay through through buying this product you're also paying for the slaughterhouse worker to get ptsd and anxiety and yeah. to be sexually violent and you, you obviously couldn't do it yourself then if that's what people are experiencing <laughs> boom you're vegan <laughs> <laughs> um I'm, I'm not gonna ask the, like the generic thought of like oh if you were in a situation like we were starving oh, would no. you kill right but i have something that's sort of parallel with that but it's not as mm-hmm. as vainly stupid a question but it's um for uh cultures so there's cultures that exist mm-hmm. where they sort of rely on meat like if you took like uh like native american people and and when they had to hunt for food mm-hmm. right if that existed i don't know I, I don't know of many like traditional tribes or aboriginal yeah, people we actually that, killed you know, them all by yeah, um no. putting we, cattle there yeah i'm sure yeah. somewhere there, <laughs> what about that place where that guy went to like preach about the bible and they killed him you know about that story that doesn't matter but anyway there's an what? island <laughs> there's an island where this guy went and tried to preach to them about the bible and they just shot him like with arrows and killed him and like, get lost um, <laughs> but on that island, these people are still like li- living in traditional ways. Imagine that happened in the Western world. Go back all these. No, that happened now. Of- no, that no, but I'm, now. I'm saying like imagine that happened in the de- in the development of Christianity. Like that's the path that we went down instead. Like someone came like, and then the- this is the Bible. <laughs> and, yeah, <laughs> Done. and the world just didn't change. Everything just stayed perfect there the way was it should no be. Christianity. <laughs> oh my anyway, god. Anyway, yeah. R. I. P. To that guy. Imagine. Here, <laughs> that's an alternate timeline. Someone should write a book about that or something, or make a movie. And be you good. should write a book about it. Just I'll, say I'll it like into your microphone. Yeah, <laughs> and people can listen to it in the future. <laughs> um, 
Uh, what was my what was my point? You oh were, yeah, you were trying to ask me so about the. What I was, what I'm sort of asking, right, is that so see people that hunt for mm-hmm. their food now, they don't add to the consumption of like this factory farming method, and someone else butchers it, and someone else does everything for you, and someone else packages it, and then you just get like the end product that just looks like food. It doesn't look like an animal, it just looks like food. Mm-hmm. What about the people who are like, no, 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 I don't want to be a part of that. I'm gonna go to. Uh, like Alaska in the middle of nowhere I'm gonna go live in like I don't know somewhere in the middle of nowhere there's just trees and snow and I'm gonna build myself a lodge house thing shed I don't know what you call it and I'm just gonna go hunt animals mm-hmm. and I'm just gonna live off the land what are your opinions on people like that that don't want to add to the <clears throat> consumption and the overall like grotesque nature that we live in right now but are still killing animals mm-hmm. Um, it's an interesting question and I think um it's yeah i i I just want to say like i am an animal justice activist first that is what i care about the most but i think um the environment is the only way that people are going to realize how bad eating animals Mm. is so that's that's why like a lot of people see that i have quite an environmental focus so first of all i still believe that it's wrong to eat animals and to use animals use non-human animals in any way because what gives us that entitlement to do that? I have like very anti-speciesist views. So um, ultimately I want everyone to understand that we don't need to be killing other sentient beings. We like we don't need to do that. So there's absolutely no moral justification for it as a human to kill another animal if it's unnecessary. But if you're talking about someone who's living in a tribe outside of society Mm. are you talking about someone who um lives in like an area where you have to hunt um animals like in the very northern Mm. areas of the world where you can't get much crops because everything's frozen over like i'm not really in any position to tell anyone like that how to live because that's not how i'm living i'm not Mm. like i'm not a native american i don't live in alaska i live in the western world where people um abuse the resources that they have so much and we use so much more than we need to so obviously first we need to focus on the west and we need to focus on the fact that everyone here has such messed up consumption habits uh, which relates to like the way that we buy things the way that we eat things the way that we do everything um yeah i don't feel equipped to comment on someone living Mm. a very different lifestyle but at the same time i think that animals are not food they are individuals and that is the future that i want to see it's where people don't eat animals i think you articulated that really well actually yeah and i think that's maybe what a lot of people miss is that Mm -hmm. when you're posting things on social media and you're talking about this you're not telling everyone every single human the Mm -hmm. same thing you're telling like i'm just trying to educate people you're telling like most of the people in your position you're telling the people that are sitting on their couch like "Mm, that's not really me i'm not going to make a difference i'm not the one yeah you're right um thank you very much for coming on and talking about this, this thank you for brilliant. having me no thank you um and yeah is there anything else you want to plug quickly before oh uh, no just like stick links in the yeah. description it's all good yeah. but so to check anyone, them out yeah and to anyone who actually listened to this thank you it's crazy to think that someone would like actually listen to an hour of me just rambling on about <laughs> crazy, crazy Trust stuff me. yeah that's what i think that's what I think, and then I realise, oh wait, they're not listening to me, they're listening to who I'm talking to. <laughs> nah, it's both. Like, if they're looking at your platform, they're, yeah. Mm. But my platform is dedicated to talking to interesting people, so thank you. Thank you very much.